Hello, welcome to Show Studio. Uh, we are here on a Sunday in the midst of London Fashion Week to discuss Bailey's last show at Burberry, which is very sad. Um, he's been there for 17 years at the brand, which is incredible. Um, but before we start talking about the show and Bailey and the magic of Burberry, um, I'll let my wonderful panel introduce themselves. So we'll start with you, Benjamin. Hello, my name is Benjamin and I am a cultural historian. My name is Corinna and I'm an academic and a digital strategist. I'm Lucy Moore, I'm the director of Claire de Rouen. I'm Rhea Dillon, I'm a photographer and casting director. Amazing, I'm Georgie um, and I work here at your studio, I'm fashion editor. Um, so I want to dive straight in and be like, and be asking you, what do we feel about Bailey moving on? Lucy, I'm going to you because first, <laughs> <laughs> you have the in. <laughs> I've been working with him for, for seven months or so. Um, I think he's, you know, he's been there 17 years, it's a very long time. He's done incredible things for Burberry, amazing things. Um, and he probably naturally feels perhaps like he just wants a change. Um, and I think also he's very wise and perhaps also recognises that there's a kind of, he's given so much and done so much, but perhaps there is, it is time for someone else to mm. um, give their input. Um, but I think it's kind of, it's, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what happens because there are many directions that the brand could go in and also he has kind of really established um, a code and to see who, what, you know, what his successor does with that will be mm. interesting. But it's also, I mean, what was interesting to me and a lot of people sort of picking up on in the sort of commentary is that it's almost, as we were saying before, become sort of cyclical, that you're ending with, as people were sort of saying, the iconic um, check, that sort of come back and that's almost where... Um, he sort of started in sort of 2001, sort of dealing with the sort of fallout with mm -hmm. something that was just so ubiquitous that people mm -hmm. were yeah. um, almost sort of fed up with it. And I'm still sort of wrestling with whether that was clever or whether there was some sort of um, sort of message that was being sent, that the sense that, you know, he, under Bailey, Burby has become a much sort of stronger identity. Consequently, now it can sort of re-release, if you like, the check in ownership of it. Mm. Or, or whether it is just a sense that actually after 17 years, the sort of cupboard is bare sort of thing. So let's just sort of recycle. Um, and I, I kind of am still not sure which of those, or, or others that I'm sort of leaning to in some ways. I don't know if the whole concept of luxury brands owning their symbolism in a mm. kind of, um, you know, elite way is, is a kind of outmoded concept, I think, now. But it wasn't 17 years ago. And therefore, I think it's natural that it's not really a Burberry-specific decision mm. to kind of engage with, um, you know, tropes of a brand that have fallen into, like, different avenues in the yeah. past. It's, it's, that's happening across the board, really, I think. So it's more to do with luxury, the whole concept of luxury, I think, in fashion. I don't know, it was just interesting, sort of reading something in the... Um FT this morning about, so I think mainly sort of commenting on, on New York Fashion Week, but the sort of point that, um, and I'm not sure I entirely agreed with it, it was sort of quite polemical, but this idea that sort of the big brands, the fashion brands have sort of realised that customers aren't necessarily always going to go to um, them just because of a, of a, of a logo or, um, you know, a particular piece of clothing that, that, that has a sort of distinctive sort of signifier on it, that they're much more savvy, there are many more options. Um, and he was saying that it's quite interesting when you sort of look at um, let's say Tom Ford's collection, which ended for the first time with a sort of underwear um, uh, um, sort of element to it. Or at the point I think that um, Robert Armstrong was making a connection also with um, um, Calvin Klein, where its sort of advertising campaign is very much at the moment similar to the 1992 Marky Mark um, campaign. But this idea of brands almost going back to or trying to have these signifiers to sort of tap into a market which is now so sort of diverse that if people want to or are going to continue to buy and find these sort of brands relevant, there needs to be these sort of signifiers. Mm -hmm. So I think actually with sort of Burberry going back to or um, conjuring with the, with the check again, it, it, to my mind, seems to perhaps be emphasising that you need this sort of this thing, this sort of icon that makes Burberry sort of what it is. Mm. I think commercially this collection will sell well. Mm. Um, and I think it will help it remain um, young in terms of its kind of perception. But I think it might also alienate 
the more, I don't know, traditional customer. Because mm -hmm. um, there, there wasn't much for that customer, I think, in that particular show. Mm -hmm. I think I it really was, it was, was for the younger person. Like mm -hmm. even, even with the inclusion of the rainbow check, obviously, which I'm sure we'll talk about more. Mm -hmm. But that was what's happening now, you know, just picking up on LGBTQ being like a thing in fashion. I don't even like it being as such mm -hmm. part of that community too. But it definitely is It's for this younger, audience that are tapping in again like with them with supreme at viton like lots of these big houses are realizing they need to be speaking to these kids even though they may not be the prime ones who have the money for it yeah they're the ones that are like logging in they're the ones clicking likes etc what they what they're about what their advertising is about i feel like bailey's always been tapping into youth though just in this now it has to be in this through this different lens i mean when you had um gosh what was those Indie stars walking for Burberry and all that, and was it the guy from the horrors or the guy like when all that major indie skinny jeans mm. winkle pickers was like the thing and everyone was like lusting after it? You really wanted to be wearing a trench, mm. a Burberry trench coat, and that was Bailey. So I think he's always been tapping into this what do young people want? Who's like Cara, for example. It was kind of more subtle then. Yes. I yeah. feel like this yeah. was like, yeah. I mean, obviously because of the nature of it hasn't been his final show, but it was very mm. much more overt than ever before. Mm. I feel like last collection was definitely a push towards a younger market, but mm. much less explicitly so. Yeah. Mm. I really like This the was the collection. first time we saw the check back in a big way. And I think this connected with your ex the exhibition you curated beautifully. Tell me a little bit about that, please. <laughs> uh, uh, Christopher asked me to curate an exhibition of British photography to coincide with, it, with the show and you know, be on display for two weeks after the show in the same space. Um, it, was, it focused on British social portraiture from kind of 55 to 86. Uh, but I think... And I think, yeah, sort of what I'd say about it in the context of this conversation was that really it was exploring ideas of tradition and freedom of expression kind of in tandem in relation to Britishness. And mm -hmm. I think that whilst, of course, my work and, you know, was tied to that collection, not, not the new one, I think that um, that idea of Britishness as being both, as being this kind of intertwining of tradition and iconoclasm is kind of quite consistent with this new collection as well so mm. um uh and i think i think yeah i think dave i think david christopher bailey is kind of um <laughs> is is quite a genuine interest in youth culture um mm. which has been evident through his commitment to music as well for mm -hmm. like many years mm. um, and I think that, that came through. I mean, we were talking again before about the sort of the, the fun, and I think that was a lot of comments that I sort of picked up immediately afterwards on sort of social media, that this was a really sort of fun show. Mm. And you, you got that when you had the sort of live streaming of the sort of makeup and, 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 you know, the model prep beforehand. It was something that you wanted to be part of. I mean, afterwards, I was sort of singing sort of badly, probably, but sort of Jimmy <laughs> Somerville sort of all evening. So, you know, it really gave me that kind of, um, th that, that buzz. But I'm not sure... And those ideas you were talking about, sort of Britishness, etc. I was almost looking for them in the collection itself. Mm. And there were some sort of leggings where you had sort of Burberry, England, London written across them. But I didn't really find anything for me that was sort of overtly English British in that. Mm. It was much more sort of diffuse, tying in with, as you said, this point about sort of Bailey maybe trying to grapple with the sense of chaos or uncertainty in, in sort of you know, the contemporary contemporary world. Um, so I think that made it maybe relevant, mm. but perhaps not so um, much about sort of the British themes that have come through in previous collections, perhaps. Mm. No, I agree. I think also it was kind of, as he's leaving, everyone was like, I'd rather it be this fun kind of celebration mm. than this just, you know, the throwback greatest hits thing that so many people do when mm. they leave. Yeah. Yeah. So that was almost kind of forgiven for the, for the clothes and the craziness of it is that oh it's fine because he's having a fun you know he's, he's leaving let's celebrate it's cool yeah. Mm. um yeah so yeah that's how i feel on that i think also this was to me anyway this connected so well if you're bringing you're reviving the check back which has been mm. so previously affiliated with kind of chav culture and working class culture and then it's important to kind of reference all these british all the british tropes and that's what you the exhibition did and you had this you had the opportunity to kind of remind yourself of all the different elements of what it is to be British, 
And so this felt, this made a lot of sense to me. And I think the latest collection, I missed some of the, the slightly more um, kind of like Yorkshire Dales mm. element and the kind of the Burberry Mac elements of Burberry. And I don't think that's a necessarily a bad thing, but, um, and I suppose, do you mean you missed it as in you wished it had been there? Yes, yes. I, yeah. I wished more more of it had been there. Or I guess the last collection, really, yeah. the trench coat was a major thing mm. yes, in the yeah, last yeah. collection. <clears throat> and I sort of feel like, you know, being lucky enough to own some of them now, a number of them. Mm. They are so beautiful. It's kind of indisputable how brilliant they are mm. and perfect. They're like the perfect coat. And I wonder whether they, you know, I don't know whether Burberry really has to keep in a way maybe you they can you know christopher could kind of rest on his laurels in that one area mm. for this collection that's you know? true actually it's really and it was a focus of the, of the last one so. yes very true i am um, i suppose when you're looking at british you have to look at all aspects of british and mm. that nowadays is very much yeah. puffy jacket and graffiti and youth culture and sportswear and it would it would almost be foolish to say we are a british brand and we celebrate everything about British and then to ignore that. So yeah, in that respect, mm -hmm. I do kind of understand this. Shape I think well. also he, it's a, it was very optimistic, not, you know, it was fun, but yeah. it was, that was, that had a deeper mm. kind of meaning, which was that it was optimistic. And of course mm. the, you, the, the new generation are where we lay our, mm. you know, hopes. <laughs> no, <it's just laughs> so, in a way. I always think that that still could have gone further because when you had, um, um, uh, they were sort of coming out first of all with the sort of beautiful sort of cashmere on. I was trying to sort of frantically try and decipher what was sort of written sort of on, 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 on the cashmere jacket. It wasn't, it was just sort of swirls and things. And mm. I thought if you're tapping into sort of the graffiti, there could have been some sort of message there or, mm. or, or something that had greater resonance so that this fun in a sense can be channeled, mm. you know, either in the immediate or into the future. So it, it's going somewhere. Yeah. So when you look back, you could say this was sort of a turning point or the beginning of you know, a foundation for whoever's going to take over as, as a sort of creative director. But it, I just thought that was a bit of a missed opportunity. Because mm. um, it, it reminded me a lot, actually, in terms of, you know, the, the spectacle of it, of a um, exhibition at the V&A, I think back in 2013, the um, Club to Catwalk. Um, and, and the sort of, the, the power of, of the sort of juxtapositions of colour and, and, and texture. But the messages that that was then conveying in that time period, mm -hmm. and I just thought that somewhat was 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 lost. Mm -hmm. You know, you have got that fun. You are sort of, you know, tapping into um, a huge amount of sort of sympathy and interest because it was Bailey's last show. Um, so I, I don't know. I thought there could have been a bit more sort of audacity there. I guess. Yeah. Shall we look at the clothes? Let's just yeah, yeah. Yeah. Unpick them a little bit. Oh, we've got video. Fab. So they had these crazy swinging lights that. Mm. UVA very did. moody and actually harks very much to what you were saying about Club to Catwalk. It was very much like a, you did kind of feel like you walked into a club and you were watching these cool mm. people walk around. Dun, dun, dun. But I also thought there was <laughs> almost sort of, sort of quite Blade runner about it in sort of the opening sequence, sort of quite yeah. Yeah. sort of dark and sort of 80s. Yeah, definitely 80s. Well. This, yeah. this to me feels like a big 80s mm. warehouse party yeah. Yeah. that we've stumbled into. And it was absolutely rammed. I've never seen anything quite like it. Very, very busy. Lots of celebrities. Lots of celebs, lots of people. And also, I think every, everyone, you, we've been given the rainbow check piece on the invite. So, and ev obviously, everyone knew that it was Sinai Baunai, that you were, there was going to be this rainbow mm. element to the collection. That's Bailey's last one. So, you could feel in this darkness with the lights kind of, these started to swing, that everyone was a bit like, <laughs> <laughs> and I also think pre-show as well, from the invite and the release of the check, it, mm. it was already a, a strong talking point with that and the last show. Mm. So like those two things, I think, mm. contributed to raising mm. the anticipation as well as what was going to happen. Mm. And the check, like in lieu with Alison McLean's photos that just came out as well for them, you know, we all we all knew where it was about to go and what he was about to tap into. Mm. I mean, going back to your point, Benjamin, isn't isn't that a super bold, clear statement from a major fashion brand? I don't know, because I'm almost thinking, do you need this amount of channeling because you don't actually have a, a clear sort of identifiable message coming from the collection itself? Do you need someone to kind of, you know... Well, the ra sort of rainbows thing? run through, like, the entire collection. Yeah, no, but again, so it, does it, that message not been... come... Would you, you want words? Like... Well, no, no, I, I just sort of think 
if you hadn't told me about the sort of the LGBT plus connection before, in terms of the colours, I was sort of thinking of the old sort of Apple Mac logo, which was sort of horizontally yeah, barred into bright colours, mm. or the old Channel 4 sort of logo. There was a lot of, you know, <laughs> that sort of colour was almost sort of indicative <laughs> of the 80s and 90s generally. Yeah. So I think for the, you know, the, the sort of influence of LGBT plus, I, I think but I Given that they did more. announce it and they did tell you. Mm, but they then did, I, I so still think there could clear, have been right? more. I mean, yeah, it was clear clearer right? because I'd been told. But mm. in terms of the, the, the aesthetic the visuals, themselves. the clothes I don't think necessarily conveyed that for me. Yeah, I agree. I also feel like it went too wild with all the colours. I feel like they could have brought it back a bit and allowed the, the rainbow check to mm. and breathe a bit more and that's, that be more of a statement. Because that's what I really oh, liked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because I disagree with you in that it could not have been more LGBTQ because it smacked you in the face, but that to me was the slight issue and that I wish it had been more, I keep going on about the bloody Max, but I wish it had been more, <laughs> more integrated into the traditional Burberry that I know. And well, this, that's what I like when you said about sort of the, the um, sort of invitations, when you had the sort of check and that very sort of subtle yes. use of the, of the rainbow colour. I mean, I thought that was fantastic. Yes. But yes. I, I thought there was, that, that's what I liked because you had this sense of tradition, mm. but then sort of subtly interwoven yeah. with messages. But yes. then when it was, you know, as you say, the sort of big puffer jackets, it was just a little bit, you Wild. know, sort of tacked on. Do you think it's also the styling that's a problem then, maybe? See, I don't think, I don't think the styling is, well, some, some, a bit hit and miss. Some of the mm. stuff when it's a dress over a hoodie, I love, and mm. I think that's perfect for Burberry, and it's, mm. um, it's a really smart way for a, such a big branded house to tap into this kind of like young, fresh mm. kind of, Gotta go, but I'm gonna be cold. Gotta go out, la la la. Mm. Kind of vibe, and I think that's milk. really, really smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, some things didn't quite um, work in the same, have the same punch. Mm -hmm. I think that might just be my personal taste, so I can't. No, I, I agree. I didn't. I feel like it was very hit and miss. I'm quite into this Kandinsky vibe mm. speckles. Again, yeah, I love that if you just showed me that, I wouldn't have to say Burberry. Mm. No. Yeah. Mm. That's quite Without the bag. <laughs> <It's not pretty. laughs> walking quite slowly. But it sort of picked up. I mean, this almost seemed quite sort of mournful to begin with. Yeah. But then the sort of when you started getting the sort of bolder colours, the colours coming through, then the sort of um, soundtrack sort of upped in sort of tempos, then you got a bit more um, yeah. exuberance. What are your first Hmm. I'm always kind of thinking of it from a kind of end consumer perspective and I was kind of looking at what the what people were talking about on kind of social and it was the like the puffer, mm. the um, the inclusion of the S in the Burberry's kind of logo type um, stuff and then kind of clicking through to like Farfetch as well it was really interesting to see what, what was on their kind of first page in terms of what they were kind of pushing for the um, see now, buy now, and it, it was the more accessible um, tote bags yeah, mm. uh, and check focus. That's quite smart, I think. Mm. Mm. It is from a commercial perspective, totally. Yes. Yeah. See, I really like these kilts. I really like the tartan, but then maybe that's just me being narrow-minded and cherry-picking all the stuff that's really quintessential. Timeless for that, yeah. yeah. But it's almost as you were saying that, that, that those elements that were a little bit more sort of avant-garde in a way are providing a context for the, the things that are going to be much more commercial and accessible. Mm. That jacket and the hat we just saw with the subtle addition of the rainbow, mm. that, I really liked yeah. that. Mm. That's what I would thought it would be more like. Yeah. And the soundtrack, Lucy, you were talking about music earlier, is very mm. important to Bailey and what he does. Mm. Mm. And this was very... Ben is optimistic. Everyone was singing along. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> you are right though, there is a slow element to it. Mm. And I think that's quite um, optimistic but respectful. Yeah, mm. yeah, no, I think that's true. Yeah. But as you said also at the beginning, sort of building that suspense of what's yes. to come. Mm. Yeah. I'm interested in what you think about the casting, Ria. Because from my perspective, LGBTQ means mm. there should be an LGBTQ in there. Mm. Yeah, that's my very thoughts exactly, and there wasn't. So <laughs> I was a bit like miffed with that. I thought, especially with having the them shoot, he could have tapped into even having some of those models. Like, mm. I was part of the team who cast that. Mm. And 
it was just kind of odd for him not to. And then also, again, diversity-wise, there's 84 looks in this, there's 19 models of colour. Like, you know, that's, what's that, like, 20%? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I trust you on that one. My, my maths are right. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, there was just, I feel like there was something missed for casting. He really could have pushed it. It could have been really, really fun and more authentic. Mm-hmm. And it just felt like it wasn't. And like this next look coming up as well, this, I don't know, you won't see it here. You know, with the jacket and the hoodie and the massive, like, black skirt. It's like, mm. what was that? Mm. I don't run to the shops for milk and that. <laughs> yeah, that one there. <laughs> I, yeah. You did recast all his kind of um, campaign Favorites. girls, yeah, yeah. The, everyone that he's been working with over the years, which I think is quite a nice gesture. But yeah, I would have liked to see, I would have really loved to see like a trans model. Mm. Yeah, like members of the community yeah. actually in the show. And that would have been really nice as well, him leaving as a celebration to have them be part of it. Mm. And a nod to the future of having more, more models yeah. who are non-gendered or a part of that community inside. Mm. I think Monroe should have walked it. <laughs> yeah. It great. Absolutely great. Mm. See, this, these are completely new looks and hoodies and shapes to me. What does everyone think? I think, yeah, in terms of the, the sort of shape, but I mean, the sort of the use of a sort of limited palette, that's still something I would associate with the sort of traditional sort of Burberry mm. um, aesthetic. Yeah. Who do we think is wearing this or buying this? Because this is seen now by now. So mm. who is, who's the market for this? Because I imagine the book, see that dress is lovely, I want to have that. Mm. Um, who's, who's the Burberry market? Oh, I think it's confused. Yeah. Yeah? Mm. How so? Tell me more. I don't know. I think what we've said about the... Like, it's not immediately obvious, which could be deliberate from them, of how, how we would, I don't know, break down or interpret or choose certain pieces, whereas apart from the obvious ones that we just talked about with the check and the, mm. the kind of sweatshirt-type pieces, I don't know. Which are like ob- more obvious, have a more obvious audience, maybe. Mm. Only certain people can kind of pull off this kind of styling as mm. well. Like, Adra looks great when she mixes and matches loads mm. of different things. And obviously, she did the shoot with Jurgen for Burberry. Like, this is so Adra. Like, she looks wicked in this kind of style. Mm. But I don't think this, I think that's where we then get to the it's confused because mm. most people don't dress and wouldn't feel comfortable or confident pulling that kind of look off. Mm. So, like, here, this jacket could be pulled out, but then the shirt, they would, like, that kind of consumer with that shirt, they're not the same person. Mm. There are different markets though, aren't there? There's the mm. British market and there's the Asian market, which is extremely important. Yes, and I think yeah. that I, you know, instinct, I kind of intuitively feel like actually that market does dress a bit more like this and will buy a full look and will, yeah. Yeah. you know, and in that Definitely. sense, maybe we're just thinking too much about Britain. Yeah, mm. that's very true. That's very true. Yeah, I can definitely see those leggings being very popular. <laughs> I think so. I was doing some kind of observational research outside the um, the Converse One Star Hotel on Friday mm. when it was just opening up, and um, it was kind of really fascinating, just kind of being absorbed in the kind of 14, 15, 16 year olds who were in the queue and kind of what they were wearing and their <coughs> excuse me ability to kind of point um, different kind of brands out and just their kind of total uh, connoisseurship and knowledge in that particular area as well. And I, obviously I can see elements of that, them being customers who would be interested in, in this collection as well. Mm. I want to talk a little bit about kind of the wavy garms element to this. Mm. And kind of, this is very kind of street style picked. And how do we feel about the term appropriation? Is is it fine for Burberry to be doing this? Is it? What, what's everyone's opinions on? I mean, they've reappropriated the check, but some of these patterns and some of this kind of vintage esque mm. looks and layerings very, very much feels like wavy gums and Beckham to me. Um, but how do we feel about that? Is, is it an appropriation? Is it totally fine for Burberry to do because it's channeling Britishness? And am I too focused on the term British? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think there's, there's a sense that they've kind of 
maybe sort of raided their, their, their wardrobe. And I think in certainly some of the sort of um, the images that were put on social media afterwards, you had sort of some of the new collection interspersed with sort of archive photographs, mm. which I think, you know, is fine. But I suppose my sort of view would be if you're going to sort of reach back into your past and bring it into the present, why are you doing that? Okay, for sort of commercial reasons, etc. But you know, maybe there is some sort of sense of message. Maybe you're not just taking from the past, but you're you're editing it. You're doing something new with it. Mm. And I, I didn't again quite get that. I think there are elements that I can say, oh, that related back to the sort of 1980s or, 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 or 1990s. But kind of so what? How is it really being used or interpreted here? Mm. So that's you know the point I was saying about the sort of graffiti leggings. Let's maybe have some I don't know whether words or not, but let's make that relevant in, a, in the 21st century. Um, context, rather than just let's regurgitate the pattern. Mm. Um, so I think you know their prerogative to do, but I like with you know this coat here. You know there could have been something a little bit more rather than just sort of squiggles on it, which kind of say what it lo looks quite nice, but um, what what's that really telling me? I don't, I'm really not sure. Um, yeah, I'd love to be able to unpick these a little bit more. I mean there were elements. I mean in, in terms of the sort of squiggles, it reminded me a little bit of the I think it was autumn winter 2017 when you had. Um, Henry Moore as a sort of um, inspiration and some of the sort of sweaters again had sort of quite sinuous sort of shapes on. So I did wonder whether there's an element of, you know, paying a sort of homage to some of Bailey's more recent sort of um, works as well, which might be quite nice. Um, but it, it's quite vague. I think you could interpret that in, in so many ways. Um, There's all these trainers as well now. I'm just looking. Mm. Mm. Big strap trainers. Have those been there before? I don't know. I don't know if we have seen those before. I think so. That's a very useful addition as well. Mm. Mm. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm uncertain. What do Sorry. No, no, you go. I was going to say, it's just almost as though with a lot of the um, sort of looks, you've got maybe one piece that really stands out, as though this is the piece that people are going to sort of take away and that that's what they're going to sort of mm. you know, focus on in terms of buying. The rest mm. is a sort of sets a context for it. Um, like this jacket. It doesn't necessarily always work. Mm together. Yeah. I feel like as in a question you brought up the more and there's been Hockney references before and mm. art and music mm. is often what Bailey does, but I think this is kind of a just a ignoring of all of mm. that kind of thing and just yeah, as you said, a celebration and looking to something fun, something optimistic. But yeah, I still can't put my finger on <laughs> I don't think it appropriated um, Wavy Gums going back to what you were saying before and like the Peckham vibe because you know there really isn't anyone in Peckham wearing a massive froco skirt like that like running That's around like it's, it's not I think it's what maybe being as part of a high fashion brand you'd think of or you'd mm. try and dream of when you're thinking of Peckham without actually having been and spent some time mm. um, so yeah no but is that an issue in itself yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I really like these um it's kind of like Google, like mm. jumpers. Yeah, that, that's probably the big, biggest bit I'd buy. But that feels quite like something you might um, get, at, like Bovingdon Market, like a mm. cheeky version of a Burberry yeah. jumper, which is quite fun. That's tell me what you find in Peckham. Really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this fabulous, mm. crazy coat at the end. Yeah, Joseph Innes technical a dream coat. Yeah. You'd be so jealous. Mm. <laughs> See, I would have liked this, and I'm going to keep going on about the Max, but I would have liked this the other way around it, with mm. check on the outside and then a flash of rainbow on the inside. But I get that this is now kind of Cara's flag at the back and mm. she can wave it and walk. Which is what I was saying earlier with how she was walking. It was very much a celebration. It's like, mm. we're out here now, like, let's go. Yeah. Really letting that flow behind her and waving the flag. Yeah, I think that was. That was part of the theatrics of yes, the show, yeah. wasn't it? She ended the show. She was smiling. Like, like this, you can't see her, but she was smiling. She's having a great time. At the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Don't <laughs> <She's blunt. laughs> Do we feel like this is a little bit too little too late in the, in the whole youth culture, the shapes, the, the puffers? Do we think that if this had happened maybe two seasons ago, it would be hugely hugely successful and everyone would be like, ah, oh, it's on trend. But do you think that this is a little bit behind? For me, it feels a little behind. Um, I agree. Yeah, I, I, I think like so. Behind. Um, again, I think that <coughs> the fact that it was um, sort of Bailey's last sort of show, that, mm. that there's maybe a certain sort of I I indulgence in getting away with that, maybe just the nature of Burberry as the brand and being a little bit sort of 
um, slow to take it up, maybe that won't matter much. But I think it also depends on what happens afterwards in terms of a new um, sort of creative director, whether they run with this or whether this was just one sort of moment of exuberance because it was Bailey's last show or whether it's a theme they, they continue with. I'd be very interested to see what happens mm. after this. I think it's just going to be one exuberance, like one party, and I feel like that's where we're saying it's too late. Like if he'd done this two seasons ago, then maybe they could have picked it up and, and gone with that and actually run with the LGBTQ. And you know, because obviously some of the proceeds from the show are going to charities, um, LGBTQ char charities, sorry. But yeah, I think it's a bit slow on the mark. And I must think it's a real shame that it's Bailey's last, because I'd really like to see what he does with mm. this next. Mm. But then isn't that almost a good thing that it's his last because he did it too late and he wasn't actually on the ball? True. True. Yes, and then so then we get these like fun rainbow lasers, which I know you're very in <laughs> into crew. <Korea. laughs> which came from Australia, I think. Maybe you're here. Oh, are they? Mm. Why did I read Australia then? Making up as I go along. It's on loan from, it's a work that's on loan from an Australian museum. Ah, fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Fact check from Lucy there. <laughs> and see, this to me is like a last hurrah, really mm. fun, really pizzazz. People were dancing on the front row, everyone's singing. This is a really nice way to end, I think. What do we, what do we think? Of this finale. What do we think of the lights? What do we think of it with the clothes? Too much? Too little? Fantastic. I think, I think it's really strong, but I think it was also interesting that, again, when you look to see what people were talking about on social, it was the music and the lights and then the clothes third. Mm. It wasn't like, oh my god, th this piece or this piece was amazing. It, it was the other way around. But then I'm, I'm talking about not people within the industry, I'm talking about kind of regular consumers. Mm. Don't you think that often happens though when you have something that's a bit showstoppery in a mm. show. Sometimes, but then there, there wasn't, I haven't unpicked each of them, but there was obviously some of the dresses that were embroidered or had um, the craftsmanship element wasn't, didn't jump out hugely, mm. maybe mm. to the end. I think the styling like makes that really difficult though, because mm. you can't really appreciate individual pieces so much. Mm. It does make it really hard, like at least for me, I don't know, I'm quite, I think we're probably the same, I feel I'm, Quite classic in my approach to styling, and then so, yeah. and and you know, actually, if you have people remembering and talking about the lights and the music and everything, that's that's great. It's mm -hmm. kind of commercially again, it's yeah. really a good thing. Mm. Um. <laughs> I think you probably would want. Um, I think it's probably a nice thing for Bailey to be, uh, for everyone to say Bailey's last show. That wonderful rainbow mm. yeah. explosion of lights. Mm. And yeah. And if you think about what's going on with a lot of other British brands, the younger, some of the younger, smaller, um, like, not small, you know, upcoming designers, mm. there's a real, there's something very, very different, which is like the antithesis, which is a kind of darkness and a kind of, like, pushing into this kind of anarchic, dark pick almost. phase in order to somehow get out of this strange mood that we're all in. Mm. And so I'm not saying I actually love that as well. I don't prefer one or the other, but I just think they're kind of opposite ends of the spectrum. It's nice to have them both in the same yeah, offer, in the same offering, not yeah. in this offering, but yeah. at London Fashion Week. Mm. So what do we hope for Bailey next? Because he's, I think it's easy to forget how much he's actually done for not just Burberry, but for the fashion industry. I mean, mm. see now by now he started mm. and the reason we, the reason we see Burberry the way we see Burberry now is because of Bailey. So what would we like to see from him? Do we, where do we want him to go? What do we want him to do? Any? I think. No, no, go. I think it was really tricky when he had when he held down multiple roles mm -hmm. within the organisation, um, and I, so I think for him to be in his next role where he, he he can really concentrate on the creative aspects and maybe not have to worry as much about those kind of commercial elements. Mm -hmm. I think when he was doing that, those kind of dual roles, the, the, what he was creating was kind of different at that time. Because it it's really hard to do all that <laughs> and feel the weight of that on your shoulders as well. Yeah. He did say he's just ready to let his creative flag fly, so mm. to speak. I don't think those were exact, his exact words. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Lucy? What would you like to... 
I mean, obviously... I think he... Yeah, I agree with, I agree with you that um, I think probably designing for such a huge brand and also having to manage the commercial and financial sides of it must have been super challenging, although it's clear that he did it so well, actually, and, and so innovatively. But, um, yeah, I guess... I think, yeah, this is, in a way, is kind of an indication of maybe a kind of creativity that hasn't been allowed to fully, mm -hmm. you know, express itself within that brand. So maybe he will do that somewhere else. But on the other hand, I can also see him, like, radically transforming another major mm -hmm. house somewhere, you know, with, with the level of kind of commercial um, intelligence that he has. So... I don't really know. I mean, I hope he, you know, I hope that he, wherever he goes, he has he's a wonderful happy. time. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and he's, you know, um, yeah. yeah. I was reading something about a, a suggestion about him sort of becoming the next sort of chair of the British Fashion Council. And I think in, in, in terms idea. of what you were saying about his sort of various roles, that I think would give him quite a unique insight into that sort of position. Mm. Um, so that could be quite... Um, he is wicked smart. Mm. Mm. So it'd be fantastic to have his insight on something like that. Yeah. My perspective. What about you? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing that, and also what you're saying about the weight of having such a big brand—not just a big brand, but a big British brand—and almost kind of carrying mm. London Fashion Week mm. for us. Like so many girls have been missing London, but it's like Burberry being here that like gets them in. So I, I think he's done a great job of of making Burberry such a pinpoint of London Fashion Week, and us all still being excited and getting people to still even tune in sometimes. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think him at the BSC would be great. I think he'd be a great mentor to young designers as well, especially as fashionistas, etc. Yeah, I think that's a very important point you just made. What's actually, no, you go. No, I was, I was, I was going to say, I, the point you're making about um, being a sort of linchpin for London Fashion Week, mm. now that sort of Victoria Beckham is leaving New York to come and show it, yes. London Fashion mm. Week, it'll be interesting how that, shapes. Yeah, how, how that sort of shapes up without sort of um, Bailey at the helm of Burberry in terms mm. of the sort of dynamics and how that yeah, more generally shapes London Fashion Week. I think that'd be quite interesting. What I was going to say, which perfect, oh. um, <laughs> backs you up, is if Bailey leaves Burberry, does that mean that we're at a risk of Burberry uprooting? Will it always be a London thing now that, will it still be a draw? Will it still pull people to London? That's what I'm slightly worried about now, particularly with the bananas collection like this. Fantastically bananas. Mm -hmm. But how does it progress? Where does Burberry go? Do you not, do you not think they'll appoint someone quite soon? I mean, I hope so. Mm. But what if the, I don't know, we, it could go back to, Milan ages ago, Yonks mm. ago, before mm. Bailey, yeah. So, I mean, I doubt they would, but if this is, I know mean, now we have VB, but if this mm. was the, the, the linchpin of what's keeping people in London, mm. Bailey I was mean, there. I've always admired him, obviously, from a kind of digital perspective as well, because he was one of the ways that he managed to remain or kind of help keep Burberry to kind of remain a new relevance with new audiences was through what he did with digital and mm -hmm. the teams that he managed to assemble so many other brands like if you look at what Gucci's doing now they wouldn't have been I think as experimental with their digital had they not seen another luxury brand do it beforehand mm -hmm. so that doesn't answer your question about location <laughs> but at the, I don't know I, I think it depends maybe the, who gets appointed next, but I, I can't see it kind of moving anywhere, and I think it will still continue to be a draw from the digital perspective mm. as well. Mm. I think that digital perspective is in really important in yeah. the draw as well. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping that he's set someone up with all the little guidebooks and being like, this mm. is how it's, <laughs> <laughs> this is how it goes. <laughs> what well, then we, it will be the same, it, or if that happens. Oh, no, as in like, this is the, you know, gen, this is the style guide, do what, do what you want. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but things will change dramatically, I think, because he's, he's extremely involved in every single aspect of yeah. creative. Like, extremely. Mm. And I, do, I think that's probably a very unusual mm. kind of working process at that level. And I think that's what so makes him so great. Yeah, it is. And he's, he's you know, so adored by mm. his, his team. And it's, it's an amazing company really from in terms of what I experienced at least um, yeah. 
And so I think things will change for sure. And, and almost like, I guess what I'm saying is, I mean, yes, it'd be wonderful if he writes a little house. How to. <laughs> how, to <laughs> how to run Burberry. But on the other <laughs> hand, I'm not sure anyone could run it in the way that he had, you know. And it feels like to, because he's been there for so long, he's, he's naturally grown, the, the, whole, the whole company has grown with him. Mm. And that, so it will, there will be sort of a real shift now, I guess. Do you, do, what do we expect from the clothes next season? What would we like to see? What do we... Well, I was just thinking in terms of what you're saying about this idea of a sort of a, a guidebook, you know, to what extent then is this sort of revival of, 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 the, of the Czech, sort of Burberry almost giving a steer to, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, whoever comes to um, um, sort of take over this idea that, you know, we, now we can sort of use the, 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 the Czech much more sort of confidently and, and, and in a way that sort of celebrates sort of collaboration, which, as you said, is, is really important for Burberry. So to what extent he's already sort of layering up a sense of, you know, setting a, a sort of foundation from someone to, to, to mm. build from? Mm. Um, because I think going from this, you, you've got to, any, any sort of future collection that, or immediately future collection that doesn't sort of conjure with the Czech in some way is just going to seem like a sort of non sequitur. It's going to just seem mm. slightly odd. It'd be crazy um, if they just went straight back to the base. Exactly yeah. so, yeah. But it also depends what happens in terms of counterfeit with the Czech, because what was really interesting originally was that they decided to, for instance, the scarf, because it was the entry price point, which at the time was, I think, £60. Mm. They took that completely off the marketplace and then reduced as much Czech as possible, whereas now they're going the other way. Obviously, plenty of time has passed, but it'll be really interesting maybe to see what elements are counterfeited -fit and if that has a commercial impact on the decision for the next collection. That would be amazing. I'd love to see a Burberry LGBTQ scarf <laughs> on like Hackney Road. Yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. It's probably there already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by now. Okay, well, I think that has been a great topic of discussion. I don't know if we should do a round of applause because it's a bit of a mixed bag of opinions, but thank you all for joining. <laughs>